Great. So, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for, for staying around. I know we're getting into the, the, the late afternoon session. So, I'm Avril B, and I'm from Technological University Dublin, and this is a description of some of the work that's been ongoing by a large team of people. I'm just here as a representative of the group around collaborative BIM education. So, some of you who were in the room earlier, you'll have hear, heard Rory and Derma talking about um, innovations that are going on. on particular individual programs but we also in TU Dublin we have a school, the school that I'm head of which is multidisciplinary technologies and we've been set up specifically to do collaborative education to break out of the silos and to create programs and courses that spread across or that work across different disciplines. Um, so what we just wanted to talk about is we've made a number of changes and we just wanted to kind of give, it, give an update on where we are and why we have come to, to what it is that we have changed. So you're probably very aware of some of the major drivers that have gone on. So our original, we, we started BIM Education in around 2012. Um, now we had been doing teaching of Revit, we had been doing teaching of Civil 3D since about 2007. Um, but we hadn't actually got a particular programs around this until around 2012. Um, so that was the last time we'd had, in 2014, we'd had a last course set up and a full restructuring of the programs. But since then, some of the major drivers that have occurred, um, you're all probably well aware of, the Roadmap to Digital Transition. And obviously we know that that was set up originally to be from 2018 to 2021. And you know, very shortly, within the next couple of months, we will have an announcement from government which is actually going to give some funding to the recommendations that came out of that particular uh, roadmap. We've also had the uh, BIM, man not a full mandate, but certainly a, um, a commitment from government to implementing BIM on government contracts, and that's been happening since about two years ago. And aligned with that, the standards, the Irish standards, are now coming out in terms of adoption of the ISO 9000, or 19650 and having the Irish annex to that. So obviously the, the standard one came out earlier in the year and then the Irish uh, addendum to that is now on its way. So within that, of course, particularly within the roadmap, you would have had the targets that had been set for BIM. And while we've been incrementally updating our programs and uh, changing them to allow for us to um, react to the, all the different motivations that have been happening in the outside market, we hadn't had a fundamental review, so over the last few days, that's what we've, we've been doing. And it, as part of that, what we have done is we have broadened out the amount of collaborative BIM programs that we have available because we know from the feedback that we're getting from employers and particularly from the number of requests that we have coming in for looking for graduates who are BIM enabled that we haven't been providing sufficient graduates into the market. And the idea is how could we adapt things so that we would actually provide more. So as I said, just from a historic point of view, we would have started off in 2012, 2013, in response to the original springboard call, which was a labour market activation fund in response to uh, the, the downturn in the construction sector where you had a lot of construction professionals who um, ended up unemployed and needed to reskill and upskill. At that point, we created two level eight CPD diploma courses in BIM technologies and collaborative BIM technologies. But we very quickly realized that actually the level that people were operating at on those programs, because they were all professionals already, was actually at a higher level. So we brought it up to postgraduate level in 2014, and we set up a suite of programs, which was the Masters in Applied Building Information Modeling and Management, with a PG Diploma in Collaborative BIM and a PG Cert. And over the last five years, we have um, probably graduated about 250 students out of that particular program and there's a few of them in the room here which I'm glad to see but there's and, and also across the event here and we've had very good success with that we've been trying to be as agile and responsive with that as we can in terms of adjusting to market needs etc but as we said we knew that just graduating people at level nine at postgraduate level wasn't sufficient there was a demand for people who were going to come out into bim technician bim modeler and somewhat bim coordination jobs and, and what would we do to assist those 
So just this year, and it was actually the validation, as, as Dermot said, was only two days ago. Um, what we set up was we've set up a new suite which includes the same previous masters that we used to have, which had the exit options of PG Cert and DIP. And this is really for information managers, so creating for people who are working in jobs as BIM information managers. But we also recognised that there were a number of people who were going through that programme who were exiting at the PG Cert or DIP level because they got contracts abroad or their job role changed and they weren't able to continue coming to class two nights a week because we, do, we do a lot of blended learning as well, but it, most of it um, hinges on coming into class two nights a week. So we've also, within the new program, set up a research version of this master's, and I'll show you more detail in a second. But the big um, addition is the level eight honours in BIM and digital construction, which is a one-year top-up that is aimed specifically at graduates of level seven programmes who may feel that they don't have sufficient BIM or there wasn't a lot of it included on their previous courses or they want to do more specialisation in that particular area. Or it's for people, and this is one of our really big target areas, is people who for, have maybe been in site jobs or on the tools or doing trades, they might have a level six qualification or they might have you know, 10, 15, 20 years of experience in the sector wouldn't be eligible to come on to a level 9 programme but could come on to a level 8 programme with recognition of, of prior learning. So we've mapped the suite out, I'm not, gonna, I'm not asking you to read that, don't worry, I'm going to zoom in on it, but just to show you that we looked at these as kind of, these are a suite of programmes that there is allowed to be progression from as well, so if somebody does come in and do the level 8 with us they can move into the, the level 9 as well. So the, the new program, the DSC ONS in, in BIM, we're using a very similar structure to what we had previously used and what Market has told us that we are doing correctly in terms of educating professionals. So we have streams, so technology specific modules that are the initial focus of the, the program. So we've got some of them in architecture, in civil and structural, in mechanical and electrical engineering, and then also in a construction uh, area and with those particular modules are focused on being able to produce the model and then being able to review and validate the model. Wrapped around that we have uh, some context in terms of standards and knowing the process that goes with it but also then a concentration on coordination. So we have a BIM federation and validation model which is about that multidisciplinary coordination and this is one of the I suppose advantages we, that we've had in the past is because we take people in from so many different disciplines and we then create a context where they can work together in multidisciplinary teams, this from our students point of view has always been the favourite part of the course because it's when they actually get to, uh, like we've had people who have maybe 20-25 years of experience in the sector who for instance, I had one architect, 25 years of experience in the sector, and he had never sat down at a table with a mechanical engineer before. And we put them in a context where that can happen. So as the sector is evolving and this is becoming the norm, we're giving students the exposure to it. On top of that, then, we have a work-based learning module. So because we've got two kind of target cohorts here, one of them is for students who are already employed in companies. So let's say you have somebody who used to be in a um, technician role or in a trades role and then is moving into a design office or something similar so that they can then do the upskilling in parallel with while they are still doing their work. But we also have an option if there's somebody who's coming full time onto the program or isn't already in that particular type of work and they can do an internship so they can do a full time internship. So the difference between the two of those is one is running on just the academic year and the other is on the full calendar year and the internship is done during the summer with the hope that it's, it's like a long, two month long interview after which hopefully a lot of these people will stay on or the companies will uh, make their decision which way that they want to work. And obviously as we all know these days interviews are two way processes so uh, we see what way it goes. And then the students will do a, dissertate, or a dissertation on top of that as well, into which we build some agile project management. So there will be a, a little management element of it as well. The master's programme is as we've had it before, but we've streamlined it. So we have three streams, one in architecture, one in quantity surveying and construction management, and one in mechanical and electrical engineering. And we are in discussions to put a civil structural one into, into there as well. The second year of the program is all about collaboration. It's about taking the standards. I was just talking with uh, my colleague Kevin Furlong, who delivers this. 
And this year we've completely updated that from the PAS 11 to the ISO. We're using the implementation or the ISO implementation guidelines that are produced by BIM Alliance who are out there in the, um, in the exhibition hall. And it's really a case of helping people to understand and realise, okay, there's these dry standards which are documents, but how do we actually bring those into a real context and put them to work? So we first of all take the standards apart, put them back together, and then we create a project that people actually go through a utopian situation where it's not about the design, it's not an architectural competition, it's about can you carry out your collaboration in the way that is ideally envisaged and look, we, it's a warts and all process. People experience what they experience. There are, we have had a chair thrown across the room, but thankfully not many of them recently. Um, but it's about helping people to learn how to collaborate and how to work together. And that then goes into a research methods module and a capstone. And actually there is about eight of our capstone projects that we presented <coughs> across today, which is, is fantastic. We're delighted with that. But the new, one of the new innovations that we have here in the new program is that because of those people who might after the first year of the program become more mobile or need to move away or don't have the time to continue with the two two times a week visits we've created a larger capstone project which allows people to take on a more considerable piece of research and these research pieces are there's a problem in the sector or there's a problem that they're dealing with in their company or there's an issue or there's something they'd like to improve or make better and how do they go about that in a systematic and robust way try something new test it out evaluate it and then do an iterative improvement on it so we have across the entire program in fact across all three programs we very much are underpinning this with the lean, lean methodology, which is all about continuous improvement and trying to get things right first time, but working at, at all times to improve the product that's going to the, to the customer at the end of the day. So, for instance, uh, just to give a little bit more detail in terms of that collaborative project where we are on it, this is last year, the second year students, they did, the, the project was set up and what has been really great about this from the point of view of us in TU Dublin is this program has allowed us to bring our lecturing staff from across different schools together and the, the, those staff act as a client team to serve the students who are set up in, different, in their multidisciplinary teams. So um, you'll see there, there are two colleagues, uh, Rory and Dermot, are in on it. So they, they come in and talk and, and help the students with construction management, QS. I'm originally a geo, so I go and come in on that. We have an architect. Um, and the, the Kevin, who runs the program, he's an ME, MEP expert. And then we have Emma Hayes as an architectural technologist who's helping with teaching it. So the way that this is set up is that there's a, a very formal... There's an EIR is issued to the students. Most of them look at the EIR and go, why do we never get this on projects? Why they, you know, we're used to getting projects where we have to write the EIR, so this is a new one where they're actually getting the EIR at a very high standard. And there will be certain requirements in a project description. As I said, it's underpinned by principles of renewable, using renewables, using green, trying to achieve well standard or... Um, lead standard or something like that is, is a requirement and then we might put a certain other number of requirements in it um, and then the students are required to work to a very specific schedule of data drops which are aligned with the RIBA digital plan of works and you can see there where you know we've got the different stages we've got the data drops we've got purposes we've got plain language questions and the staff have fully developed all of these in different plain language questions and the teams work on a week by week basis to actually develop these and then to provide the information with the arrival of Autodesk BIM 360 this has actually been made a lot easier because like Dermot and Rory were saying the feedback can be given online and the responsiveness to that is extremely good because the students see it instantly and they're not having to go from their digital system to a piece of paper or to somewhere else to read the feedback. It's all integrated within the one tool. And they're realising obviously that this BIM 360 tool then, they can see how that can work for helping collaboration out, out in industry. 
And last year, for instance, the pro one of the projects that we would, the project that we undertook, which was a large collaboration one, is to do with a site that we have in Broombridge, which is part of TU Dublin's regeneration um, around Grain Chorman. And we started off with a laser scan, which Leica kindly did for us, and the students were provided with that, the laser scan and with all of the standard base documentation, plans, sections, elevations, local mapping, um, and any other information that we could get, any client team, etc. stuff. And I think I have time to play just a little section of this video here. So this is just what one of the teams here would have produced. So the idea with this particular um, building was it's a disused warehouse, which is to be converted into a design and construct centre for education, for um, education in, the, in this particular area. And as I said, some of the requirements on it were that there would be a very large theatre space in it, that there would be breakout rooms, there'd be a VR, AR cave. And so the students were using the whole suite of Autodesk products for this, and it was underpinned by BIM 360, but they were also <coughs> welcome to use alternative other software. So if there was something else that they were used to using, whether it was um, for lighting design or some sort of energy analysis or whatever it happened to be, because we would have used IES on this as well, they were encouraged to bring the different products into it. But it wasn't a design competition. It was purely about monitoring, going through the process and doing all the data drops as would be required in a, in a full level two BIM process. And I suppose that what that takes me on to is just to say, so we've talked about kind of the pedagogy, the, the actual structure of programs, but well, one of the other things now that we're doing in TU Dublin in terms of trying to help the industry actually really be able to send people to us to get collaborative education is that as part of our redevelopment of um, the DI, what used to be the DIT, bringing it together with Talla and Blanchardstown, we're moving to a new site at Grange Gorman. And one of the things that we also have is we have a, a site called Broombridge, which used to be Larry Goodman's um, meat storage uh, facility. It happens to be about two um, stops further along on the, the Lewis. So all of this is, is on the Lewis. So down here at the bottom, you can see Dominic there. So that's literally next door to where we currently are in Bolton Street. You've got the Grange Gorman campus shown in the white, and then two stops further on from if you've got the actual Broombridge site. And it's, as I say, it's a disused warehouse, but it's structurally sound. And then at the back of that warehouse, we have a large all-weather pitch, which has already been redeveloped for our sports groups, and it's the size of Crow Park. Um, so we'll have some of this building will be for sports, social, etc., and the other part will be for um, design and construct. And what we want that design and construct building to be, or that centre there to be, is a building that will be a lean, sustainable living lab where apprentices, undergraduate students and lifelong learners experience collaborative, multidisciplinary and digital design construction, operation and maintenance. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to create a physical space that matches the ideals and the philosophy of what we're trying to do in terms of the education programmes. And I suppose just to say that in terms of, of, of impact and what we've been doing on it, we have very strongly you know, kept in touch with, with the sector. We set a goal for ourselves that we would lead that we would look to be improving things and like seven of the 38 papers that are in the parallel sessions are coming from students who, who have come off our master's program which we're, we're delighted with. 90% of our graduates have received promotions whether it's in their own company or they've moved or whatever so again from an individual perspective it, it's given that, that great bounce and because we were responding to Springboard and um, part of the motivation of that is getting, was getting unemployed people back to work we have, have had a huge success rate in terms of that as well. And I suppose we were lucky enough as well last year to actually be voted uh, the best postgraduate programme at, at the Irish Construction Excellence Awards. So we were delighted for, for all that as well. So I suppose the final message is just to say we want to continue to innovate to serve what the needs of industry are and we're always open to taking more feedback and taking on board comments as to, to what anybody says to us. Okay, thank you.